Hi everyone, this is Lana from Lana Under Pressure and in this video I'm going to show you how to make my instant pot matzo ball soup. My grandma bunny's matzo ball soup was the very first recipe that I converted to the electric pressure cooker. And if you've never had matzo ball soup, I've heard that it's kind of like a really good chicken noodle soup mixed with light fluffy dumplings. Now I've never had a dumpling so I'm not sure, but what I can tell you is that it's absolutely delicious. The main ingredient for this soup is a whole chicken. and. The reason I love and I only do this soup now in the Instant Pot is that you can actually make it using a frozen whole chicken, completely frozen, like it's been in the Antarctic for 500 years frozen, which if you're a procrastinator like I am, I can never remember to defrost anything. So being able to take it straight out of the freezer, cook it and have it done in like an hour and a half is a godsend. It's wonderful. The brand I like to use are the ones from Costco and you probably if you've gone there you recognize it comes in a two pack and the reason I like these is because they don't put the giblets in a bag and then inside the chicken. So that way I can put this whole frozen chicken right inside of the instant pot. Now if you're using a brand like Purdue or Tyson I think those are the ones that'll put the giblets like in a bag some kind of paper bag or something. You want to make sure that at least you thawed enough to take that out because you don't want to bag cooking in your soup. That's awful. So um, make sure whatever whole chicken you're using, if you're using it from frozen, that either it doesn't have the giblets or the giblets aren't in a bag. Before we get to the matzo ball part of the matzo ball soup, we want to cook the soup and the chicken and the vegetables to get the stock going. And what we need for that, aside from the chicken, is you need four cups of chicken broth or chicken stock. You can also use four cups of water with two chicken bouillons dissolved in it or better than bouillon, two tablespoons of that. You can do that instead. You're also going to need a little extra water and I'll show you what you need that for in a second. For the vegetables, you want to have three uh, stalks of celery. You can add a little more if you like celery. We don't really like celery too much so I stick with three. And you want these to be cut about an inch thick. You also want three large carrots peeled and cut about an inch thick and three small onions cut in quarters. And if you only have large onions, just use two instead of three and cut them a little bit smaller. Also one tablespoon of kosher salt, three bay leaves and one to two teaspoons of ground black pepper. Insert the trivet that came with your Instant Pot. This will help for easy removal of the chicken later on and it also keep it from burning or sticking to the bottom. Then place the entire frozen chicken right on top of the trivet. Add all of the vegetables into the pot and now for it to fit you're going to have to lift up the chicken and you can put some of the celery and carrots and onions underneath as well and that's okay if they're touching the bottom. all the vegetables now we're going to add the chicken broth and I added the pepper to the broth just because it's easier and pour that right over the chicken and if you have a chicken noodle soup recipe or something where you have other herbs and spices that you like to add feel free to add those as well then sprinkle the one tablespoon of salt over the top now you could have added that to the broth if you wanted but I like to sprinkle it over the top. You'll notice that that amount of broth is not enough to reach the maximum fill line or the 4.5 line on a six quart. So that's where we add the extra water a little bit at a time until you've reached the line. And it's okay if it doesn't cover everything. Now we're going to add the bay leaves and I like to add them on the top so it makes it easier to remove them at the end. And we're going to replace the lid, lock it in place and make sure it's set to the sealed position. I'm going to show you how to set up the time and temperature on the two styles of Instant Pot. Now this is my max and on this one you're going to press pressure cook, 
Then you're going to press the time and you're going to adjust it so it says an hour or 60 minutes. Make sure it's set to vent. So you have to press it twice and make sure that it's set to not vent and then press start. The models that have the button style like my smart or the duo, you're going to hit manual and then raise the t time up to 60 minutes and keep pressing it till you get to 60 minutes. Make sure it's set to high pressure and then you just leave it and it'll start on its own. Our soup is done pressure cooking so we're going to allow it to natural pressure release for 15 to 20 minutes and in that time we're going to make assemble our matzo balls. I'm using Manischewitz matzo ball mix because that's the one my grandmother always uses and I'm just doing it according to the package which is one package of the matzo ball mix two eggs and two tablespoons of vegetable oil and you just mix that together now I'll link in the description below if you want my recipe for homemade matzo balls once you've incorporated all the ingredients together this is what it should look like you're going to wrap it with cellophane or cling wrap and put it in the fridge for about 15 to 20 minutes and this is why I like to do this part while your instant pot is natural pressure releasing because it's perfect timing We've allowed our Instant Pot to natural pressure release. I've removed the top. Now the next step is to remove the chicken into one bowl and the vegetables into another. In order to cut the chicken up into bite-sized pieces so we can add it back to the soup, we need to remove the bones and the skin. And you'll see after you've pressure cooked it, I mean the bones just, they just come right off. You can just pull them right out. It's amazing. And any little pieces of cartilage, skin, things like that, you want to remove. You can use two forks to shred the meat or you can cut it up with a knife. But you'll see that just by using forks, it just comes apart really easy. As you're shredding the chicken, make sure you're looking through it to take out any little bits of bone, any little bits of cartilage, or any of the stuff that you don't want to eat. Our chicken is shredded and now we're ready to form the matzo balls. Now before we do that, we want to set our instant pot to saute so our liquid starts to boil. Because the matzo balls you don't want to cook too long and because I'm pressure cooking them, I want it to come up to pressure very quickly. So hit saute and start and it doesn't matter what the time is because we're going to stop it once we pressure cook it. The way we're going to form our matzo balls is you take about a tablespoon of the dough in your hand and kind of like if it's play-doh because it's cool it should stick together and you just roll it into about a one inch ball just like that. Now you don't want anything bigger because these once they cook will puff up a lot so trust me they look small but that's exactly what you want. And this amount of dough should make 9 to 12 matzo balls. I finished rolling them all into a ball. Our soup is now boiling, so we're going to add these right into the soup one at a time. Once we've added them to the soup, we're going to hit cancel, add the lid back on, and we're going to high pressure for 10 minutes, then do a controlled quick release to release the pressure a little bit at a time because if you don't do it that way, the soup will start spurting out everywhere. So you want to do a controlled quick release after the 10 minutes and then we can open the lid. Once all the pressure is released, you can open the lid and you'll notice now the matzo balls have almost tripled in size and they're floating at the top and this is exactly what they should look like. Our soup with our matzo balls are done. The pressure is released and I've taken the lid off. We're going to add back the vegetables and the chicken. Now this is quite a lot of chicken and I don't add all of it back in. Usually I'll add about half and it depends how many people you're feeding. So let's add the vegetables back in and now we'll add back about half of the chicken. Maybe a little more than half. And now we're done and it's ready to serve. And here's our matzo ball soup, ready in about two hours with a homemade broth 
from a frozen chicken. Hope you enjoy. If you like my videos, please subscribe. You can also find me at my blog, lanaunderpressure.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.